All right, we're gonna start working on the Z assembly now. And uh, we need, uh, we're gonna do two of these, but uh, first we're gonna start with the sub assembly here. So we're gonna assemble a YZ mount uh, for the Z axis uh, panel. And there's the YZ mount. It's got the nice uh, kind of chamfered uh, edges. We need a stepper motor and four uh, 10 millimeter M3 screws out of the bag that has the uh, toothed uh, pulleys here. And then one of these guys, this is uh, the coupler. <clears throat> and we're not going to attach the lead screw until later in the assembly. So we're just gonna put this part together now. And Ryan doesn't indicate where the cable should be coming out of this assembly. So I'm just gonna put it straight out the front there. And we'll go ahead and just start threading in some of these screws. See if we can get it started in the stepper motor there. Feels like it's going in there. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and get the rest of them in. Okay. And last, we're going to put on the uh, coupler nut here. We'll talk about uh, stretching that when we put the lead screw in toward the end of the assembly. So uh, of course uh, there's a large end for the uh, lead screw and then there's a small end for the stepper motor and we want to make sure that one of those screws sets on uh, the flat area here. And this is a little bit larger one, I think it's a, a two millimeter. Remember to tighten up the other one. So let's look inside there once. Uh, as you can see in here, there's a little ridge down there where the uh, hole changes diameter. So I'm keeping the uh, shaft of the stepper motor just up to the point where it changes that uh, size in there so that we can go ahead and um, <clears throat> get uh, all of the lead screw in there, uh, get all enough space for the lead screw to get in there fully. <clears throat> So there we are with that assembly. All you have to do is just make another one, just like that. Then we'll go on to the next step. So here we are with the XZ plate. We're gonna assemble this, but uh, I didn't clean out my uh, little holding tabs very well in there, so the stainless doesn't quite go through those holes. So I'm just gonna nip those out right now with a little uh, side cutter. That's one. All right. Now let's see if we can fit this through there. Yep, goes through on that side. And yep, it goes through on this side. So we're good to go. In addition, we need a corner X and a corner XM. There's a corner XM along with eight six by 32 by three quarter inch uh, screws and lock nuts. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and prepare to install the center section here. And some of those are a little snug, but that's fine. And then we're going to align this piece on there properly through those screw holes. Oops, stay on there. We'll grab a lock nut. Now if these lock nuts stay all the way down there on the base, they will um, 
lock in place so that you don't have to put a pair of, uh, um, uh, you don't have to hold them with anything like a pair of pliers. If they slip up on you, then they won't hold. So there it slipped up on me just a little bit as it fed through. We'll just try to screw those in without too much forward pressure so we don't push those lock nuts out of their seated position. There's one. Then we'll go ahead and put another one in. Let's get a little closer here that if you put them down in there and you get them seated all the way, they will uh, lock quite nicely. But you have to hold them there. Okay, there's another one. So gentle on the forward pressure on that screw and it'll just work fine. And one more time. Hold that in with a finger and very gentle forward pressure. And there it is. That was nice and easy. <clears throat> and we even got it in the right direction. Good job. And once again, we don't have any indication from this drawing uh, which direction the wire should be coming off that motor. So I'm going to just bring it out straight. <clears throat> now we have the corner Z and the corner, I'm sorry, the corner X and the corner XM. And one goes on one side, one goes the other. They're facing toward the outside. So that one will go there. Go ahead and get a couple screws in there. Just like before. And on my prints here, uh, the holes are very snug on these parts. So we're just gonna run them through the plastic here and then we'll try to get the nuts on. I'll back that guy out just a little bit. There we go. And this side too. All right. So now there's really not enough space over here between uh, the edge and where these nuts go on to really spin that nut on there. So once again, I'm gonna kind of hold it in place there as we thread this guy in with very little forward pressure. And as long as you hold it up against the device and uh, up against the piece of plastic and down, <coughs> Uh, you won't have to hold on to that nut. Let's see if we can do the same thing with this one here. This one looks like there's a little more space on it. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, I think that's seated. Nope, that one spun off on me there, so I'm going to grab a pair of uh, locking pliers here and just clip over that uh, nut just like that. And we'll go ahead and tighten it down until the nut is flush with the plastic. <clears throat> All right, we'll do the same thing on this other side. Once again, that points toward the outside. Get these started. And that one slipped away from me, so we'll use a, a pair of uh, locking pliers on that one. Let's see what, how we do with this one. Probably not any better. Yep, it's 
So we'll go ahead and lock those guys down. So there we are, there's a completed assembly. Now you just have to make another one. There's one more step to this board where we're inserting the pipes and uh, tightening them down with the uh, Z parts here, the uh, Z corners. Um, but we're, I'm gonna leave that to a final assembly and I'm just gonna leave it like this for now so it's uh, compact until we have room to build the whole thing.